Welcome to the lecture series on Digital Electronics 18EC302C In today's lecture we are going to introduce the circuits of the TTL NAND gates There are two variations in the TTL NAND gate circuits and those two variants of the circuits will be introduced. One is open collector TTL NAND gate, that is totem pole output TTL NAND gate. So the circuits will be introduced and the working of those two circuits, NAND gate circuits will be explained in detail. We will first look at the first variant of the TTL NAND gate. It's a open collector TTL NAND gate. So here we have shown the circuit arrangement for the TTL NAND gate with open collector output. So here you can see the circuit diagram contains three transistors T1, T2 and T3. T1, T2, T3 all of which are NPN transistors. But if you observe that the T2, T1 is having multiple emitters. So it has two emitters. So this transistor will come under the category of multiple emitter transistors. So how a multiple transistor emitter works? So normally the NPN transistor for an NPN transistor, say for example, an NPN transistor is a base. This terminal is base and this is collector, this is emitter. So if the base voltage is greater than greater than by 0.7 volts, I say that the transistor will turn on. That is the base voltage is greater than emitter by 0.7 I say that the NPN transistor will turn on. So this is the case for a single emitter or a normal NPN transistor. So but how about a multi emitter transistor? You can see that this is the base for T1 this is the collector and these two are the emitter points. So you can see that out of these two emitter points, if any of the emitter is at 0 0.7 volt less than the base voltage, then I say that this multi emitter transistor is in on condition or its base emitter junction is forward biased. Right? So, in multi emitter transistor, NPN transistor, if any of its emitter voltage is less than base voltage by 0 0.7 volt, then I say that the multi, the base emitter junction is forward biased and the transistor is in on condition. So these two points, this point will be using in order to clearly understand the working of this TTL NAND gate circuit and you can see that here the two emitters the multiple emitter transistor is used since the circuit is meant for the NAND gate the two input NAND gate which that means the circuit will have two inputs and one output 
So to give two inputs for the circuit, we will be using this multiple emitter transistor T1 and each input, one input is given at one input, one emitter of emitter terminal of the T1, other input is given at other emitter terminal of T1. So next we will be using suitable resistors at the base of T1 and it collect the right emitter of T2 and we can say that this is not a resistor present in the internal circuit and this is called external resistor and exactly called external pull up resistors so this we will discuss later and you can see that the collector of T3 is the output of circuit and the collector of T3 is connected to the output of circuit. This resistor is not there actually. This resistor so this resistor is not a part of the circuit. So that means it if required it is connected externally and you can see that a 5 volt power supply is connected for this circuit and now is so this is the circuit arrangement of the TTL NAND gate with open collector output and you can see that why we are calling this as open collector output because the output is connected to the collector of T3 which is not connected to any other component neither connected to power supply or not connected to any other component or it is left open so since the collector of T3 is left open and where we are taking the output so this type of NAND gate TTL NAND gate circuit is called is called open collector TTL NAND gate. So next we'll uh, try to uh, go through the working of uh, this circuit. So in order to see the working in detail, we'll try to apply all possible cases of all possible values of the input. And for each combinations of the input, we will try to find out the states of the transistors, that is whether it is on or off. And by analyzing the circuit in this way, we will find out what is the output produced by that combinations of input. So since the, there are two inputs, two variables, input variables, we have four combinations of inputs that are possible both inputs can be low both inputs can be high or one of the input is low other is high so first we'll start with the case where both inputs are high so this is uh, a simplification or uh, this is to simplify the explanation that you, can, you may start with any other combinations of inputs but here I am starting with the input combinations where both the inputs are high where both the inputs are high you can see that when I apply a high input at A and B or at both the emitters of T1 you can see a high input means this is at 5 volt and this is at 5 volt and you can see that the 5 volt is applied to the base of T1 also through the power supply in between there is a resistor but you can see that the emitter is at 5 volt which is at higher voltage compared to the base of T1 compared to the base of T1 so this you can say that since the emitter is at higher voltage I say that the T1 is base emitter junction of this junction, base emitter junction of T1 is 
reverse biased. So that the base time interjunction of T1 is reverse biased means I can say that the T1 is in off state. So T1 is in off state since the emitter is at higher voltage compared to the base and the base emitter junction is reverse biased. And you can see that since the base is at this base emitter junction is reverse biased and the collector base collector junction is forward bias. The base collector junction of T1 will get forward biased. And you can see this condition of the base collector junction forward biasing permits a current from the power supply through the 4K register and through the base collector junction into the base of T2 to the base of T2 and drives and this current is enough the current that is entering into the base of T2 is enough to drive the T2 into uh, to place the T2 in saturation and when the T2 is placed in saturation and the voltage and the emitter is enough or the current that is flowing uh, the current the emitter current is enough and this current enters into the base of T3 and this current base current is enough to turn on the T3 into saturation right so when T3 is turned into saturation you can say that it represents it can be replaced with a zero resistance between its collector and emitter so I can say that the output is pulled low the output is pulled low since T3 is saturated that means it is acting as a short circuit so the output is pulled low means the output Y equals 0 or low so here we will once again repeat the sequence of operations that happen when both A and B go high so when A and B both go high the emitters the two emitter terminals of the T1 are at high voltage compared to the base of T1 this makes the base emitter junction reverse biased and at the same time the base collector junction of T1 will get forward biased because the current entering the base cannot flow this way as it is reverse biased but it finds a way to flow through base collector junction into the base of T2 and this base current is enough to drive T2 into saturation and the emitter current of T2 is enters into the base of T3 which is enough to drive the T3 transistor into saturation so T2 and T3 are on and T1 is off in this condition and when T3 is on the output Y is pulled to ground so that Y also becomes the output also becomes low input also becomes low and here you can see that when both the inputs are high the output is low so this confirms one case of one case for the NAND operation and we look at the remaining combinations of the input and here we will consider the case for the inputs where any of the input is low or both of the inputs are low so the three remaining cases are 
any of the input is low in this case this case and both the inputs are low so the working of the circuit will be same for all the three cases where any of the inputs are low or both the inputs are low so here you can see that so first uh, you see that when both when both the inputs are low you can see that so that is it both the emitter terminals of the T1 are at uh, 0 volts at 0 volts and you can see that the base of T1 is at higher voltage so here it is 5 volts so here it is uh, somewhat less than 5 volt but anyway it is uh, greater than point, greater than uh, at least 0 0.7 volt with respect to the emitters Maybe because the emitter is at 0 so you can say that uh, the base emitter junction is forward biased the base emitter junction of the T1 is forward biased as the emitter is at 0 volt and base is at, uh, at a voltage near to 5 volt so the VBE or the base emitter voltage of the T1 is anyway greater than 0 0.7 so the base emitter junction of the T1 is forward biased and when base emitter junction of the T1 is forward biased you can see that the current from the power supply through the resistor 4k now enters into the forward biased junction and at the same time the base collector junction is reverse biased so the current enters into the forward bias junction of the base emitter junction of T1 and you can see that this current sinks into the ground through these two diodes you can see that this diode um, N side is connected this way P side is connected to ground You can see that the current entering into the base emitter general and base emitter junction sinks into its inputs. And you can see that there is no current flowing into the base collector junction as it is reverse biased. So since there is no collector entering into the base collector junction of T1 we can say obviously that there is no current entering into the base of T2 so whatever the current entering base collector junction of T1 should enter into the base of T2 so as this base collector junction is reverse biased so there is no current entering into the base of T2 so obviously the T2 is in off condition so for all these cases T1 is on condition since its base emitter junction is forward biased and T2 is in off condition because there is no current entering into the base of T2 the base of T2 so it is in off condition you can see that once the T2 is in off condition the emitter of T2 will be at ground potential that is at 0 volt so this ground potential makes the VBE of T3 less than 0.7 and drives T3 into off state so when T3 is off you can see that that means it is it can be replaced with a open circuit between its collector and emitter so when T3 is off you can say that the output is 
output which is connected to the collector of T3 is left open is left open is left open and in this condition if you connect a, an external resistor from the output to the power supply then the output will be pulled to the 5 volt output is pulled to 5 volt if you connect a resistor from this output point to the power supply and which makes the output to go high so the output will go high so since T3 is off there will not be any connection between its collector and emitter so and the output and the collector of T3 is left open and when the collector is left open if you connect an external resistor from the collector from the output to the power supply then that external resistor pulls the output to 5 volts and Y becomes high logic high so since the output is pulled by connecting an external resistor to 5 volts then any one of the inputs are at low or both of the inputs are at low this external resistor which is pulling the output to high is called external pull up resistors so if you do not use the external pull up resistor here you will not get the high output you will not get any high output until you connect external pull up register between the output and the power supply so the low output you can get directly when both the inputs are high but when any one of the inputs are low or when both the inputs are low the output goes high only when you connect external pull up register here in this way so finally you can observe the input combination sign each input combination sign the corresponding output and you can see that the output is low only when both the inputs are high otherwise the output is high so this you can see that it's a NAND operation and by this we can say that our circuit this TTL circuit with open collector output will perform NAND operation so next we look at one more variant of the TTL NAND gate so uh, this is called TTL NAND gate circuit with totem pole output so if you observe carefully that this circuit you can say it is somewhat similar the top the circuit TTL and gate circuit with open collector output you see that this input part is same and this T1 sorry, transistor T2 transistor T3 everything is same except this T4 transistor D3 and the resistor 130 ohms so here this is the extra part that we see here when compared to 
the open collector TTL 98 and you can see here that we have four transistors T1, T2, T3 and T4 all of which are NPN transistors that is they will be in on state if its base is at 0 0.7 volt higher at least with respect to its emitter terminals otherwise the corresponding junction will get reverse biased and the transistor will be in off condition and you can see that out of the four transistors the T1 is a multi emitter transistor to facilitate applying two inputs A comma B to the circuit two logical inputs and you can also see that the base of the T1 is um, to the emitter of uh, we have two terminals uh, emitter terminals for the T1 and uh, a input is connected to one of the emitter terminal and the other input is connected to the remaining terminal of the emitter of T1 and the base of T1 is driven by the power supply through 4K register and the T2 is driven by the base of T2 is driven by the collector current of T1 and similarly the arrangement of T3 and T4 are such that T3 is driven by or uh, the base of T3 is connected to the emitter of T2 similarly the base of T4 is connected to the collector of T2 and here you can see that uh, the emitter of T4 so the, the output is taken and the collector of T3 but uh, the diode D3 is connected between the emitter of T4 and the output And here you observe that T3 and T4 they are driven by the signals of opposite phases. So what is meant by that? The T3 and T4 are driven by the currents of opposite phases. That means here they are driven by Collector uh, emitter and collector of T2. Emitter and collector of T2. And you can see that these two are of opposite phase. That means if one is increasing, other will be decreasing. That means the T2 will act as a phase splitter. And this makes sure that only one out of the two transistors T3 and T4 will be in on condition and the other will be in off condition so that means the T2 will ensure that if T3 is on it ensures that the T4 will be in off condition and if T4 is on the T2 ensures that the T3 will be in off condition 
and you can see that when T3 is on the output is pulled to ground so the output becomes low and similarly when T4 is on the output is pulled to VCC that means Y becomes high the output becomes high and you can see that since only one of the two transistors will be on simultaneously the output either it is pulled high or low so this arrangement is called as totemple arrangement as the output is either pulled high when T4 is on the same time T3 is off and the output is pulled low when T3 is on and T4 is off so this is called a totemple arrangement so that's why the circuit is called a TTL NAND gate circuit with totemple output Next, we will look at the working of this to temple output TTL NAND gate circuit. And to understand the working of the circuit, we will analyze the circuit for various combinations of the logic inputs A and B. And for since there are two input variables. So we have four combinations of input possible when both inputs are low, both inputs are high and one of the input is low and other is high. So we got four input combinations and for each input combinations, each input combination will apply and we will look at and we will understand the working of the circuit and we will obtain the output and finally verify that whether this circuit performs NAND operation or not. So, so we can apply any combinations of input, but um, we'll apply the inputs. We'll see the case of when both the inputs are high. So when both the inputs are high that is A equal to 1 and B equal to 1. So when both the inputs are high you can see that both the emitters are at 5 volts. So when both the emitters are at 5 volts you can see that this is an NPN transistor and you can see that the base emitter junction is reverse biased. The base emitter junction of the T1 is reverse biased. Why? Because A, B, both emitters are at 5 volts, which is greater than the voltage at base of T1. So this makes the base emitter junction of the T1 reverse biased. And the base collector junction of the T1 forward biased. So this I can say that the T1 is in off condition. You can see that the T1 is in of condition and when base collector junction of the T1 is forward biased so the current from the VCC will flow through the 4K and will also flow through the forward biased collector base base collector junction of T1 and the collector current IC1 enters into the base of T2 the base of T2 and this current is sufficient to drive the T2 into saturation
and when T2 is in saturation, it drives uh, enough current, enough emitter current flows into the base of T3 and that drives T3 also into saturation. So that means both T2 and T3 are in on condition. T2 and T3 are in on condition. And at the same time, since T2 is in saturation, saturation, it drives the T4 into off state. So the T3, since when it when it goes to saturation, drives T4 into off condition and T3 to saturation that is on condition. So when T3 is on the output is pulled to ground to make output low. You can see that the T2 and T3 are on, T4 is off and you can see that the output is low. Output is low. And similarly, so this is the case when both the inputs are high. You can see you will repeat the sequence of operations. So when both the inputs are high, the base emitter junction of T1 is reverse biased and base character junction of T1 is forward biased which allows the collector current of which allows the collect which allows the collector current of T1 to enter into the T2 and this current drives the base of T2 and place places the T2 in saturation and the T2 drives T4 into off condition and T3 into saturation and when T3 is on or saturated the output is pulled to ground to make it low. So these combinations of input confirms and output confirms the operation of uh, the NAND operation. So similarly we will look at the remaining we look at the working of this circuit for the remaining combinations of inputs also. So in the remaining case we will assume all the remaining cases will put the transistors in a similar state. So we will assume the second case has when both inputs are low or one of the input is at low. So assume that when both the inputs are low or one of the input is at low. So when one of the input or both the inputs are at low, you can see that uh, emitter terminals are at 0 volt. Both are low, both are at 0 volt or if one of them is low, one of them is at 0 volt. And in that case, you can see that the emitter voltage is, the base voltage is greater than 0.7 volt with respect to emitter. Always, because E is at 0 volt. And this makes the base emitter junction of T1 to turn on. So both the junctions will turn on if both inputs are at low. Or one of the base emitter junction turn on if one of the input is low. Either way, the base emitter junction of the T1 is forward biased and base collector junction of the T1 is reverse biased. And now in this case, you can see the collector coming, the current coming from the power supply through 4K now will enter into base emitter junction of T1 
and no collector no current will enter into the base collector junction of T1 and whatever the current that enters into base emitter junction of T1 will sink into the inputs will sink into the inputs and since no current is entering the base collector junction that is no current is entering into the base of T2 so the T2 will be driven into off condition and when T2 is in off condition the base of T3 is placed at is will be at 0 volt so when T2 is off when T2 is off the base of T3 will be at 0 volt and this makes a zero current into the base of T3 which places which makes T3 off and at the same time enough current will enter into the base of T4 from power supply through this 1.6k as T2 is off current will flow through 1.6k and enter into the base of T4 which drives T4 to saturation that is it is on so in this case in all the cases either both of the inputs are low or one of the input is low T1 is on T2 is off and T3 is also off and T4 is on and when T4 is on the output is pulled high and the output is pulled to VCC which makes the output high and you can see that the output is high for all the three cases where both the inputs are low or one of the input is low the output is high and here you can see that there is no requirement of Coulomb register as it is required for open collector circuit so this totem pole arrangement that is the combination of T3 and T4 transistors driven by the T2 will make sure that the output is either pulled to ground or it is pulled to ECC so at no time both the transistors are in on conditions only one of the two transistors will be in on condition and also the advantage of this two temple arrangement uh, this two temple NAND gate circuit over the open collector circuit is that here the output can switch faster from low to high or high to low I can say that the output can switch faster for to temple output NAND gate compared to open collector NAND gate So this is, uh, then you can observe that here for all the input combinations we got the output and we observe that the output is low only when both the inputs are high and the output is high for when both the inputs are low or any of the input is low and this 
confirms that the circuit gives a circuit performs the land operation so this is uh, how the circuit actually gives the land operation thank you